Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. Today I'll be quilting the last five quilts. I have a big project going here. Here are the 10 little table mats that I've been working on for a while now. And today is the end of the big project. I'm really pleased to have it almost complete. I need to do a little bit of hand stitching, but um, I can pretty much say I'm done. And so I'm going to bring you along. Let's get started. Here are nine of those little small quilts that I am making for an upcoming event. They will be in the center of tables at a retreat and there will be an auction. So they might be vases of flowers or whatnot on top of these little quilts and it will raise money for that retreat. So here's the first one I'm going to start with today. Like I said, I have five today and I'm going to finish and I'm so happy that um, this big project will be done. So I'm starting with the backing for this and I wanted it to be plaid to go along with it and here's a nice plaid shirt. The back of this shirt was just the right size for this little quilt. Here's my 505 spray. I'm running low, so I need to order some more. But I use just a really light spray with these quilts. I spray just a little tiny bit and then I on the batting and then I smooth the quilt top on top of it and turned it over and did the same on the back. All these little quilts that I'm working on today are um, made with this pieced uh, batting that I made a couple of videos ago that is just size-wise it was just the perfect amount of batting and it's working out really well for these small quilts. To quilt, I made a line right through the center and then I just moved over two blocks um, each direction and just followed those half square triangles basically and stitched a diagonal line going both directions. binding is one and three quarter inch wide and I'm cutting it the width of the fabric so I will probably need two pieces for this little uh, quilt which is about 20 inches. All my little quilts are 20 inches or thereabouts. After joining the ends of my binding, I'm going to place it face down. And you've got to be careful when you have a, a muslin like this, figuring out which is the right and the wrong side. You have to check where your seam is. But I'm leaving myself about a seven inch tail and I'm going to stitch all the way around. I'll stop before the corner and then I'll sort of pivot and sew off the corner and then I will lift the binding up and down right on that seam, put a fold, and I'll start sewing right at the very top of that fold and I'll go around my little quilt just like that. Stopped before I got to the end and now I have two tails and I will be cutting one of those tails off 
and making sure that the one on the left there has at least one and three quarter inch uh, left over and I'll measure with my little piece of fabric there. I'll trim one and three quarter inch and I'm then I'll put the right sides together at a right angle and I will sew from corner to corner and this binding should fit perfectly all the way around my quilt. When it was all on, when the binding was all on, I rolled it around to the back, I pinned it down, and when I have my quilts completed today, I'll sit down and do all the hand stitching on the back. Uh, this really pretty red and green quilt, I did basically the same way. I followed the seams diagonally through the quilt and tried to stitch in the ditch and used a thread that was sort of a creamy thread that I think goes along with that background fabric and then of course I trimmed and I added the binding. This little blue quilt is such a pretty little quilt. I just love it. It was made with a lot of leftover pieces. And I wanted to mention that all of these little table mats are in my table mat playlist. So I made most of these here on my channel in my sewing room. And I listed them all on that playlist. So you can access how to make some of these quilts there. And again, I just stitched diagonally and I used those blue squares as my guide. I just stitched next to all of the sides of those blue squares and it gave me a really nice diagonal grid throughout this little pretty blue quilt. This time I'm going to switch my foot, my foot on the sewing machine here. I'm going to put my quilting foot on. I'm going to put the feed dogs down. And instead of straight lines, I'm going to make some wavy lines. So I'll continue to use the blocks 
in the quilt as my guide. I'll just go right through the middle of all these squares and tri half square triangle blocks. And instead of a straight line, it's just a wavy line. It's really easy to just wave your line like that with your feed dogs down and it gives just a, a little different look to the quilting on this little quilt. Last but not least, we have this really pretty gold and green quilt. I'm going to keep my um, quilting foot on here and I'm going to do just the simple swirl all throughout this quilt. I'll just go square by square, quilt square by quilt square and do some swirls with some little loop-de-loops. Make sure that my tension is correct. Last time I um, did a video I was working on a quilt and these swirls were the tension wasn't quite right so I had to take some stitching out and this time I checked ahead of time sometimes you can check on the edge of the quilt outside on the batting and the backing if you have some excess that's a good place to kind of test your stitching to see if your tension is correct but I went all the way through this quilt with those loop-de-loops and trimmed and then I was done with this last little quilt. I had a lot of fun making all these little quilts. Small quilts are doable and it you can experiment with different blocks. But of course, when it was all said and done today, I had a big mess to clean up. <laughs> so I'm gonna clean my sewing room and get ready for the next video. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.